Hello everybody. In this video, we'll be studying about brachial arch anomalies. I am Dr. Sanjay Datta, MSCNT. Now let's start. What are brachial arches? These are the embryological precursors of face, neck, and pharynx. Um, what are brachial arch anomalies then? They are the second most common. congenital head and neck lesions the first most common being the thyroglossal duct cyst the second brachial arch anomalies are the most common amongst the brachial arch anomalies now coming on to the embryological development of brachial arches they develop between the fourth and seventh week of gestation there are six pairs of brachial arches which form on either side of pharyngeal foregut in cranio caudal succession the fifth arch is rudimentary it never forms now what is the structure of a brachial arch first there's a core of mesenchyme then there's a line of endoderm and there's a line of ectoderm outside endodermal lining forms brachial pouches and ectodermal lining forms a brachial cleft outside now let's look at this picture these are the brachial arches in the neck of the foregut if we cut it we can see the cross sectional images here we can appreciate the cleft and the pouch is better now these are the clefts which are marked in blue and these are pouches which are marked in green they develop into several structures which we will study later now the green ones i have highlighted here are the pouches and the blue ones are the clefts now coming on to the brachial arches and the structures derived from them these are the brachial arches and these are the clefts and the pouches and the structures now we'll study in detail now the first cleft forms the external artery canal while the first pouch forms the eustachian tube tympanic cavity and the mastoid air cells now the second pouch forms the palatine tonsil and the supra tonsillar fossa the third pouch forms the inferior parathyroid glands the thymus and the piriform fossa the fourth pouch forms the superior parathyroid gland the apex of piriform fossa and the parafollicular c cells or the ultimo brachial body which further form the parafollicular cells the second third and fourth clefts form the cervical sinus of his which gets obliterated usually later in life now the structures derived from the arches respectively are from the first or the mandibular arch we get the mandible the body of mandible we can see here the malleus and incus from the second of the hyoid arch we get the superior part of body of hyoid from third and fourth respectively we get the inferior part of hyoid and the larynx now let's come to this table which is showing the pharyngeal arch the artery nerve the muscle the skeletal element and the adult structures derived from respective brachial arches now coming on to the first arch which is also called the mandibular arch so we get the external artery canal from the first cleft we know that already right the artery is the maxillary artery nerve is the trigeminal nerve and the muscle elements are the muscles of mastication also the anterior belly of digastric tensor tympani tensor villi palatini and mylohyoid muscle 
the skeletal structure is derived by the mandibular prominence the mandible malleus incus meckel's cartilage maxillary prominence maxilla zygomatic bones squamous temporal bone palatine bone and the vomer bone the adult structures derived from the first arch are the middle ear auditory tube and the diphthongic cavity the second arch of the hyoid arch the artery is the stapedial artery the nerve is the facial nerve and we derive the muscles of facial expression from the second arch they are namely buccinator platysma auriculis frontalis orbicularis oris and oculi stylohyoid muscle the posterior belly of digastric and the stapedius muscle the skeletal structures are the lesser horn of the hyoid bone the superior half of the body of hyoid stapes uh, bone and stylo process adult structures are the supra tonsillar fossa crypts of palatine tonsils now coming on to the third arch third fourth and sixth form the cervical sinus of his which gets obliterated later now the third branch uh, the third arch artery is the common carotid artery glossopharyngeal nerve stylopharyngeus muscle now how do we remember this glossy is stylish the glossopharyngeal nerve stylopharyngeus muscle is supplied by it uh, the skeletal structures are the greater horn of hyoid bone and the inferior half of the hyoid body adult structures are the inferior parathyroid glands and thymus now coming on to the fourth phalangeal arch arteries are these cranial nerves are the superior laryngeal nerve okay so the muscles are the intrinsic muscles of soft palate levator villi palatini and cricothyroid how we can remember cricothyroid is supplied by superior is cricket is a superior sport in india so cricothyroid is supplied by superior laryngeal nerve now it forms the laryngeal cartilages and also the adult structure is the superior parathyroid gland and the c cells of thyroid now coming on to the sixth branch now these are the arteries the nerve is the recurrent laryngeal nerve the muscles are the intrinsic muscles of larynx excluding cricothyroid how can we remember this all others keep coming back coming back is recurrent all others are the all other muscles except cricothyroid it also forms the laryngeal cartilage so this is a very nice table you can take a screenshot of it now what is a fistula what is a sinus what is a cyst fistula is a communication between two epithelial surfaces here fistula means if there is a communication between the pouch and the cleft okay what is a sinus sinus is a blind ending tract either it connects the skin or it connects the pharynx if it connects the skin it's a brachial cleft sinus if it connects to the pharynx it is a brachial pouch sinus now what is a cyst cyst is when there is no communication with either outer skin or in a mucosa so it is a trap thing trap remnant then it is called a cyst now coming on to the second brachial arch anomalies which are the most common brachial arch anomalies most commonly these occur as cysts then come sinus and fistula now what is bailey's classification bailey's classification is for second brachial arch cyst anomalies 1 2 3 types now let's look at these in detail now what is the type 1 uh, bailey's classification in this it is the most superficial it lies along the anterior surface of sternocleidomastoid muscle deep to platysma but it is not in contact with the carotid sheath sometimes the fistula opens in the tonsillar fossa 
now coming on to the type 2 bailey's classification here it lies anterior to sternocleidomastoid posterior to submandibular gland and adjacent and lateral to the carotid sheath okay lateral to the carotid sheath Now, coming on to type 3, Bailey's classification. In this, it extends medially between the bifurcation of internal and external carotid artery. Upon imaging, we can see a beak between the ICA and the ECA. Now, coming on to type 4, Bailey's classification. In this, it lies deep to the carotid sheath within the pharyngeal mucosal space. And it opens into the pharynx. Now, what are the investigations that we'll do? In case of a brachial arch anomaly, we get an ultrasound done. Brachial cysts are well circumscribed, thin walled, and equic with evidence of compressibility and posterior acoustic enhancement. They may contain internal echoes compatible with internal debris. Okay? On doing a CT, we see a well circumscribed low density cystic mass with a thin wall mri is done in case of deep tissue involvement now what is the treatment complete surgical excision encompassing the external sinus opening with dissection of the sinus tract as well this was all in this video i'll see you in my next video thank you so much for watching